You will never reach a good quant score if you make silly mistakes in algebra and arithmetic. In fact, this is why a lot of GMAT test takers can't reach their desired percentiles. Algebra and arithmetic consist of 60% of the quant section, which means you cannot ignore these topics. GMAT frames its questions in such a way that you could make silly mistakes and not even realize it if you don't have fundamental understanding of these subjects. So here we are discussing the most common mistakes that people make. Watch the video till the end so you don't fall prey to them. Common mistakes in algebra and arithmetic. Mistake number one, dividing by an unknown variable. Consider an equation. 3x, x minus 2 is equal to x, x plus 6. Easy, right? Well, let's just divide both sides by x. 3x minus 2 is equal to x plus 6. 3x minus 6 is equal to x plus 6. 2x is equal to 12 we get x is equal to 6. This was a fast way to solve the question, but the solution is wrong. By removing x, we have removed one of the possible solutions because x can be not only 6, but also 0. And with this solution method, we have killed one of the answers. We made the mistake of dividing both sides by x, but when working with variables, you have to be sure that the variable you are dividing with is a non-zero number. This is how you should have approached the problem. 3x, x minus 2 is equal equal to x, x plus 6. Subtracting x, x plus 6 from both sides, 3x, x minus 2 minus x, x plus 6 is equal to 0. Then we can get to the common factors so we can combine the statements. x, 3x minus 6 minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. x, 2x minus 12 is equal to 0. x, x minus 6 is equal to 0. Dividing 2 from both sides and we get the solutions as x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 6. Be careful while dealing with unknown variables variables and always check if you are missing any solutions. Mistake number two, inequalities. Let's say x minus 3 is greater than 2x minus 6. Then we get minus x plus 3 is greater than 0, which looks a bit ugly with the x having a minus, so you could be trying to get rid of that negative and multiply both sides by minus 1, in which case you would get x minus 3 is greater than 0, x is greater than 3. If we plug in x is equal to 4 in the original inequality, does it satisfy the inequality? x is equal to 4 would give us 1 is greater than 2, which is clearly not true. 4 minus 3 is greater than 8 minus 6, or 1 is greater than 2. This happened because we multiplied the inequality by a negative number. You need to remember this about inequalities. When you multiply or divide the equation with a negative number, the inequality flips. Mistake number 3. Squaring square roots. Consider an equation. x plus 2 is equal to square root of 2x plus 12. Now let's square both sides. x to the power 2 plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 12. x to the power 2 plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. x plus 4 into x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x is equal to minus 4 or x is equal to 2. But if we put minus 4 in the initial equation, it does not work. Minus 2 will equal to square root of 4 and minus 2 then will equal to 2. Well, where did we go wrong? To understand this, we must understand a concept called degrees of an equation. The degree of an equation is the highest exponent of a variable in an equation. x plus 3 is equal to 0 is a first degree equation. x squared plus 5 x plus 6 is equal to 0 is a second degree equation. x to the power 3 plus 8x to the power 2 plus 5 is equal to 0 is a third degree equation. The degree of an equation is equal to the number of solutions we will have for it. When we square both sides of an equation, we are essentially increasing the degree of the equation. Because of this, the original equation with a lesser degree will not satisfy all the solutions we will get. Always check the final answer and whether it fits the equation. Mistake number four, absolute values. Absolute values can be tricky to deal with if you don't know how they work. In x mod minus 3 is greater than 2x plus 3 mod, you cannot cancel the modulus from both sides. You'll have to take a structured approach to get to the actual answer. When you remove a modulus, you have to consider two cases. If x mod is greater than 3, then x is greater than 3, or minus x is greater than 3, or x is less than minus 3. So you get a range of values that are correct when solving complex inequalities with moduluses. Remember to check if the solution set actually satisfies. If x mod is greater than y mod, it implies two cases. Let's say y is greater than 0. x mod is greater than y, which is equal to x is greater than y, or x is less than 
minus y. If y is less than 0, x mod is greater than minus y, x is greater than minus y, and minus x is greater than minus y, which is equal to minus y is less than x is less than y. So there will be multiple solutions while dealing with absolute values. So let's take the original example. x minus 3 mod is greater than 2x plus 3 mod. Let's take two cases. Number one, x minus 3 is less than 0, and number two, x minus 3 is greater than 0. Solving case number one. Here, x is less than 3, and we have 2x plus 3 is less than minus x plus 3, and 2x plus 3 is greater than x minus 3. We get the interval minus 6 is less than x is less than 0, and it satisfies the initial condition of x is less than 3. Considering case one, x minus 3 is greater than 0, and 2x plus 3 mod is less than x minus 3. So 2x plus 3 is less than x minus 3 or 2x plus 3 is greater than minus x plus 3, x is less than minus 6 or x is greater than 0 and x is less than 3. So we get the interval minus 6 is less than x is less than 0 for the first case. Before solving case number 2, let's look at the initial equation. Can x is greater than 3 even satisfy in any case? Well, no. Therefore, we are not going to bother even solving this case. Hence, our final answer is minus 6 is less than x is less than 0. When you make assumptions for variables, be sure to check after each step whether the answer you have satisfies the assumptions you are making. Mistake number 5. Overlooking units and conversions. The GMAT loves to test your ability to work with different units and perform conversions. Let's try a question that helps us better understand the units. The speed of light is approximately 1.86 into 10 to the power 5 miles per second. This approximate speed is how many miles per hour? A. 1.11 into 10 to the power 7 B. 6.7 into 10 to the power 7 C. 1.11 into 10 to the power 8 D. 1.86 into 10 to the power 8 E. 6.7 into 10 to the power 8 The speed of light can be written as 1.6 into 10 to the power 5 miles per second. Now we need to convert seconds into hours. We know that 3600 seconds is equal to 1 hour or 1 second is equal to 1 divided by 3600 hours. So we can write the speed of light as 1.86 into 10 to the power 5 miles divided by 1 divided by 3600 hours or 1.86 into 3600 into 10 to the power 5 or 6.7 into 10 to the power 8. Hence, E is the correct answer. To deal with problems involving units, remember to 1. Note the units given in the problem and the units required in the answer. 2. Double check that your final answer is in the correct units. 3. Memorize basic conversion factors of time, length, weight, and temperature. Now that you know the mistakes you are making, how do you fix them? Well, you do it by maintaining an error log. What is an error log? Well, it is a continuous method of analyzing practice problems. It can be a sheet of paper or a spreadsheet. The medium is not important. It tracks the issues in your problem solving and the repeated mistakes you are making. It helps you identify why you're answering problems problems incorrectly and where you should put your work in. How do you use an error log? Once you are done with a mock test, you need to mark a few things. 1. Before checking the answers, mark complete guesses, somewhat educated guesses, problems that took too long. 2. After checking the answers, mark incorrect answers, follow up on educated guesses. 3. After you have marked where you went wrong, it is time to analyze, track time spent on each problem type or section, identify patterns and mistakes, focus on understanding why you made each error. After this, you will know which areas you need to put work in, so it is time to adjust your study plan. Target weak areas, practice applying concepts to varied question types, work on time management for problematic sections. Check out the link to a GMAT Club error log in the description. It automatically records all practice questions you attempt on the GMAT Club forum, which has over 50,000 questions. You can then download the spreadsheet with all of the practice details such as time, topic, difficulty, and a lot more. By understanding these common mistakes and practicing strategies to 
to avoid them, you're training your brain to be more precise and logical. Keep practicing. Don't get discouraged if you make any mistakes. Every mistake is a learning opportunity. With time and practice, you'll find yourself naturally avoiding these mistakes. And that's all for today. If you found this helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more GMAT tips. And remember in the comments below, let us know which mistakes you've made in your studies. Until next time, happy studying and may all your GMAT prep be productive. Bye!